Hello fellow swimmer, my name is Ricardo, I am your solution engineer. In this video, we're going to talk through the dock lifecycle when using Swim to create a dock, commit it to GitHub, and then open a pull request. We're going to share important best practices to create effective docs. And then lastly, we're going to end the flow by merging our document to our repository for everyone to see. There are two ways you can create a document. First is on your top right of your home screen, and then the second is within the repository directly. If you do create a swim doc on your workspace home, then be sure to select the intended repository here. Once you select your repository, the document will be created on your default branch. If you want to create a doc straight from the repo within a specific branch, then go ahead and hover over the docs menu and go to the specific repo, and you'll find that in the breadcrumbs, there's a dropdown with a list of all your repositories. Be sure to select the one you'd like. And remember, all docs are saved as markdown files within the repo. So just like other code files, this branch is where the document will be saved. Once you're in your repo and branch, you can go ahead and create a new doc. So let's go ahead and click Create. And you'll notice that there are many options that you can start from. For context, a playlist is a collection of docs, media, or external links which you can store in a particular order. This is great if you're going to create an onboarding program for an individual role or a topic that needs to be consumed as a collection. We'll cover playlists in a different video. You also have the ability to create a document from an open pull request. Simply create the document and then you can select from a list of open PRs or insert the PR number here, and all code changes from that pull request will be added to your document to pre-fill it. That's one way to get started, not from scratch. You just need to explain the code. So let's backtrack and exit out of here and go back to our create. Other ways you can get a jump start on content is to select from one of our pre-filled templates, or you can import existing markdown files as well as Notion or Confluence docs. For this demo, let's go ahead and get started from scratch. So we'll start off by giving our document a title. Our recommendation is to be as descriptive as possible. API versus the flow of an API call is much better and the user will understand what the document is intended to describe. So let's go ahead and write the flow of an API call. Great. Our second tip is to start from the main blocks of code that tell your story. Trust me, this is a massive game changer. It's so much easier to create an effective document when you start from the code. If you were to explain your feature from the beginning to the end, ideally you would start from the first part of the funnel and walk your reader through each step of the journey. So we're big fans of walkthrough documentation. So let's start by selecting our first few code snippets and add them to our doc. While doing so, don't think about what you want to write in the doc, but rather, what are all the relevant parts of the code that you need, select them, and then eventually you can go back and change the display order or even delete snippets later. So let's go ahead and type slash into our document. And we'll notice that there's a lot of swim commands that we can use and integrate into our document. For this purpose right now, we're going to go ahead and select our initial code snippets. And so what you'll see is the Snippet Studio comes up from the bottom drawer and we can essentially select from any file that's located within our repository. Since Swim has access to all repos authorized, we take advantage of being able to include code coupled elements from multiple repositories. So let's navigate into our directory to find the file that we'd like to select our snippet from. All right, we want to import this value here, and you'll notice that it has selected both of those lines. And if we wanted to add more code, we can simply click here or shift enter. And so let's go ahead and add that and select another line item. Let's go to main pie and now select import. All right, great. So we've added two snippets to this document so far, but our call requires a microservice that is on the front end. We note here in the Snippet Studio, we have our breadcrumb, which highlights all of our repos, and we can go ahead and select a snippet from another repository to include it in this one document to paint the entire picture for that flow of this call. So let's go ahead and search for 
a file here. Okay, add this relay, and we're gonna go ahead and add all three to the document. That was pretty easy, and now we have most of our document in place. So let's go ahead and give our snippets a description. This is our first call. Here is the follow-up. And lastly, see the post IP below. Next, we're going to add a path for the reader to consider. Let's tell them to navigate to a specific file, type slash, and bring up our swim commands. We have four options here. We want to tell them to go to a path. What you'll see here is the file tree for this repo, and you can select any file from within here, or you can go back to all of your repos and select one from a different one as well. So let's go ahead and select infection monkey here and go all the way down to control pi. So now it's time to inform the user of a variable that's important to this document. So let's tell them to double check victims max exploit. But we want to code couple it so we can start by typing with a backtick and we can write anything to select as that reference. So let's go ahead and continue writing. And you'll notice that while we type victims max, we'll have multiple results. Obviously, victims max find is here because it's in this document, which is referenced in this snippet. And then we also see results from the back end. If we were to click into our dropdown, we can deselect or select any repositories we want to reference from. We are going to select victims max exploit. Now you have it. There is a code coupled smart token. If we were to forget to input the backtick, we can go ahead and continue typing. And you'll note that Swim is smart enough to recognize that potentially this could be a smart token you want to reference. You'll have the option to accept that here as well and code couple it in the same manner. So this is the crux of Swim's value added benefit. Anytime your team makes updates to these code coupled elements, such as paths, snippets, or tokens, we are going to compare your source code files to make sure that the docs that reference them always have up-to-date code. Now, let's extend this doc further and add a diagram. Let's go ahead and browse our options, and we'll select diagram from our swim commands. For those of you not familiar with Mermaid, it's a JavaScript library that allows charting or diagramming to render in Markdown. What we've done is we've made this very easy for you to get started and you'll see a list of pre-filled options on the right. Whatever your use case, feel free to choose whichever diagram fits you best. You can add or remove elements as you see fit and they'll render immediately in the diagram. But more importantly, we've swimified it. What I mean by that is you can take existing values from your code and convert them into smart tokens right in your chart. Let's try that. We were to delete the word one and enter a backtick, we can reference our victims max exploit value and select it right from the options that are shown here. So we can see that this is now code coupled as there are two backticks. And if we were to click it, we know exactly where that token came from. That's pretty amazing stuff. All right, the next step is to commit everything that we have created. Since now our doc is completely filled out, we're ready to take that and put it in the repository for our other users to see. The best way to do that is you'll see on the top right, the commit one change is highlighted. So you'll notice that this document is listed here and you have the option to put in your commit message as you would in any git commit. And then you can push it directly to the demonstration branch, but as a best practice, we like to create a new branch and start a pull request. We'll say this is my first API doc, and that is our commit message. Let's go ahead and commit this change. Now you'll see that it opened a pull request right within GitHub. Because we originally drafted our document on the demonstration branch, our PR is going to request to merge it into the demonstration branch from our newly created branch, update swim docs. Note that our GitHub app has verified that all swim docs are up to date and our checks have passed. So we can move forward by merging this pull request. Once we're done with this merge, we can go ahead and delete the branch to head back to our workspace and see the merge doc on our demonstration branch. 
So let's go ahead and delete that and move back. All right. So you'll see that there is an existing pull request because we haven't refreshed this page, but this was the exact same one that we just worked through. And so let's go ahead and refresh this page. Awesome. So now anyone who navigates to the demonstration branch is going to see our document here displayed in their Swim workspace. And also those who pull the latest from GitHub will see this document in their IDE. Be sure to check out our video on Swim's IDE integrations as well. That's it for this video. To recap, we went through the Swim doc lifecycle. We started by creating a doc and then added code coupled elements such as snippets, smart tokens, and paths. Additionally, we added a diagram and code coupled it with a smart token. Lastly, we committed our document to our repo, opened a pull request, and merged it back to our main branch for our entire team to see. Be sure to join our community Slack channel, and until the next video, happy swimming!